you're here because you want to mask out a complex object. Whether it be a tree like in this example or something else, buckle up, you're about to learn. It's actually not a mask that you're going to be applying, it's actually something called a mat, and I'm going to explain to you what that is. Basically what we have here is we got the word text just sitting here, and we've got a tree that's seemingly overlapping it. It looks like the text is in the background, it's off in the back, and the tree is in the foreground, and it's kind of layered. And that's actually not the case at all. This is a separate layer, obviously. You can see it here. And uh, we've actually got a mat that has been applied here. And it's what's making the tree look like it's overlapping the word text. I'm going to show you how I did that. So what we have here, we've only got three layers here. This is really simple. How you do this is really simple. Footage, if we separate this, the base footage. We've got the word text here, which we actually can't see at this point. And then we've got the mat that goes over top. But we're gonna redo this, so we're gonna go into another composition. We've got this nested sequence here of what you just saw. We're gonna keep this off to the side for now. So now we're gonna recreate it. So we're gonna go get our footage. I'm using this video here. And the reason being is because this technique really works well with videos of high contrast. And what I mean by that is you see this tree here? Masking out this tree or taking this tree out and then putting it on top of the word text It's gonna be really easy because it's really dark compared to the rest of the video Everything in the background is really light and everything in the foreground is really dark like this uh, Not just this tree, but this little bar thing here. That's just kind of sitting there These bushes are kind of d uh, really dark compared to the rest of the video and everything that's in the background so that's gonna work to our advantage in this scenario get your footage and then we're gonna create some text I'm just gonna do what I did in the example I'm just gonna name this text I'm gonna make it a cool font I'm just doing this for me you don't have to do this so now that we have our text we can go ahead and just place this anywhere and I'm gonna place it over here we're going to then copy this footage and we're going to paste it up here and just as a little side note, in case you uh, weren't sure why this pasted up here, you'll probably have video 1 selected by default as your main video track. If you want to change the track target, then you can just unclick video 1 and hit video 3 or V3. And whatever you paste will paste into that track instead of V1. Just a little, as a little side note, if you didn't know that that was something that you could do. Now we've got three layers here, like we did in the example. Uh, this is the exact same layout, except we're going to rename this one, this duplicate. We're going to rename it Matt just for convenience, uh, and so that you can tell what's what a little bit easier. And what we're going to do with this mat is this mat is going to determine what parts of this piece of footage that we have in here are going to be overlapped and are going to appear to be over top of the word text here. Everything, just keep in mind that this matte layer here is exactly the same at this point in time as this one right here. So now that you know that, we're going to continue on. So we're going to go to the effects panel. So we're going to search matte. And there's going to be two effects that we're actually going to use. And the first one is set matte. We're going to drag that onto our matte layer. And you're going to see it here. Here's our effect. And by default, it should be on video 3, but if it's on none, just select video 3. And use for matte, alpha channel, just keep it on alpha channel. And then we're going to head over to our text layer, and we're going to use our second effect, which will be track matte key. And we're going to drag that onto our text layer. And if we drag uh, this down here, if we come down, you'll see here's the effect, track matte key. You're going to see three options here. You're going to see matte, composite using... Matt Alpha, uh, and Reverse. We're not going to use the Reverse, so don't bother with that. Matt, we're going to set this to Video 3. What you're going to want to do then is, instead of Matt Alpha, you're going to select Matt Luma. Luma, mats. First, first of all, masking is not actually what we're doing here. We're actually applying a matte and not a mask. They're similar, but they're, the concepts are two completely different things. So a mask uses the Alpha channel and alpha determines transparency. Luma does not determine transparency. Luma determines uh, the amount of light that is emitted from an object, and if we apply that to Premiere Pro terms, um, the brighter an object is, 
the brighter uh, a video is, or a, the brighter a certain area of a video is, the more luminosity it has, or luminance. When you're using a mat, it's usually, usually uh, your mats are going to be all black and white. White translates to transparent, and black translates to opaque. So whatever's black is going to appear above whatever's below your mat. Good thing about track matting is, as opposed to an adjustment layer with a mask, an adjustment layer is going to affect all of the footage and all of the other layers below it. If you only want your mat to be affecting certain other layers, like this mat is not affecting this footage here. What you're doing when you're setting the mat and then track matting it is you're specifying what layers you want the mat to affect. And right now we've only specified that this mat should affect this text layer here. Good thing in most cases, especially in our case, since we only want this tree to be in front of this text and if we want to add anything else uh, none of those other elements that we would want to add later on uh, would be affected by this mat. The reason why we kept this at alpha channel uh, in the set mat effect on the mat layer is because there's nothing transparent in this piece of footage. It's, remember it's the exact same footage as this. Setting this to alpha wouldn't make any sense so that's why we have this set to Luma, which is checking for the brightest areas of the uh, piece of footage, the white areas and the black areas. And that is part of the reason why this text is transparent and is not completely solid. It's because we have not added threshold yet, which we are going to do now. So you're going to go over to effects, you're going to search threshold, and we're going to drag this threshold effect over to Matt. We're going to drag threshold on top of the set mat effect. And by default, it's going to be on one, but you're going to want to set to zero. What we're going to do here is we're going to actually drag past this text to where we could see this mat layer all by itself. And you're going to see that it's all white, at least with my footage, it's all white at this point since it's set to zero. We would have to turn this value zero up. So I'm going to set it to zero point two. Our foreground objects that were darker than the background uh, in our footage are now black. Uh, it is set to 0 0.2 right now for this footage in particular. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to the beginning and we're going to move this text over here. And as you can see, the text now appears like it is behind the tree. And the reason being is because this mat, these black parts here are opaque and all of the all of this white area all this white is showing up as transparent so everything behind it is showing through those white areas and is not showing through the black areas so we can see the text through the white areas and not through the black you could just move this anywhere you want as you could see everything is still masked N not actually masked but you know what i mean it's taken out but yeah that's pretty much it um that's all that this really takes. It's a huge time saver. If you wanted to mask this tree out like you normally would if you didn't know how to do this, uh, trying to draw a mask out for each individual uh, leaf would take forever. I mean, I'm talking like hours upon hours. This is a huge time saver. It's way more efficient. And uh, it's only like two steps. Well, not two steps, but a couple of steps. But there's only three. We've only got three layers here. This is really simple. And as long as you know how to do it, it's really simple. So, yeah, I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next video.